Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. This is not my weekly falconry video, this is just some thoughts I wanted to share and get your input on and see what observations other people have had in the field. Uh, as always, if you haven't already, if you could subscribe to my channel, it, it, I really appreciate it. It helps me keep it going and uh, I appreciate your patience. I'm still sick, still getting over this, but I uh, just wanted to get this video out anyway. So, uh, when it comes, let me back up a little here. I live in northern Utah, and in this area, we're kind of in a mountain west. So we've got mountains, we've got deserts, we've got prairies, a little bit of everything. Uh, but we are in a, a high desert. And so regionally, there's been a drought, both in terms of a lack of rain, as well as in the winter, a lack of snow, although today was pretty snowy. But, uh, and it's been years. Uh, that's also in the inner mountain west, to a bigger degree, that's also been the case. And that has an, had an impact on prey numbers. There's been other factors as well. There's been diseases. There's been the rabbit hemorrhaging disease uh, and some other things. But it's been years since a lot of key species, jackrabbits, cottontails, you went to ground squirrels, since some of these species have had decent numbers. And that impacts the wild predators as well. And then they have to look for other prey. So one of the things that I have noticed is a lot of species are pairing up but not actually nesting. I've witnessed it with prairie falcons out in the deserts. I've witnessed it with goshawks up in the mountains. I've witnessed it first time even this last year with a pair of cooper's hawks that's always reliable. Uh, and cooper's hawks are like coyotes. They, they, you know, they can handle any situation. They'll always find a way to thrive. And one of my most reliable nests, they paired up, but they did not breed. They did not, uh, they would hang out by their nest, but they wouldn't do anything. And also golden eagles. I've seen the past few years golden eagle. So what we're having is during breeding season, you have a pair of birds returning, sharing food, doing certain certain ritualistic behavior, but not actually nesting, not producing eggs. Uh, not that they're laying eggs and then those eggs are failing. They're just not. And so they're like, hey, we're still a pair, but uh, yeah, let's not. Now, uh, my way, now this is an interpretation, and I welcome your input, your observations, but many birds of prey be, breed for life. And by the way, this is my whole point. I'm gonna get to something else I've observed. This is my precursory information. Many, most birds of prey will mate for life. Uh, and a lot of them, that's pretty strict. Some of them, okay, my mate didn't return this year, I'll find another mate, fine. But, but a lot of them are very, quite strict about it. And they don't have the linguistic complexity that we do with verbal and written language. So uh, e even though they are their own species and can, through calls and through body language can in and behavior can indicate certain intentions or lack of intentions, they're much more limited. I've talked about this before with parrots where parrots will intentionally use our language with each other when their own body language is falling short. So how do you express that? So let's say, hypothetically, you get to an area and some species, there's been studies in Utah and Nevada specifically on the northern goshawk on how interwoven their breeding cycle in those two states is based off of the, the ground squirrel, the high you into ground squirrel populations. And if it's not there, they won't. Or if they come out of hibernation later, they won't start doing certain courtship behaviors until there's enough ground squirrels available. So the hypothesis for this first part that I'm talking about is that it would kind of seem as though birds are pairing up and say, look, I don't find another mate. I'm here. I'm here, but I'm, I'm maybe I'm the male. I'm hunting. I'm bringing food to you. But you are seeing from the numbers I am bringing that there is not enough here to support a family. Uh, and... Now, I know some people are gonna give me a lot of crap for suggesting that. That's fine, I'm okay with that. I wanna hear different opinions. I wanna hear different ideas, different takes. If I'm radically wrong, if I'm right. But this first part that I'm mentioning, it would seem as though birds are being like, hey, we're still committed to each other, but there's just not enough food to justify because all of us could die. If there's, if there's barely enough rabbits here in this valley to feed the two of us as a pair of golden eagles, how, you know, let's not invest in the months of, of rearing, you know, growing and raising the young. Now, I'm not saying that they're thinking that. That could all be a stimulus response to the lack of prey coming to the uh, prey trade-off platforms or, or whatever. But I'm suggesting that I have observed that multiple species in multiple biomes that are not 
producing young, but they're still defending their breeding territory, their breeding range, and they are showing commitment to each other. They're still doing food trade-offs to each other, calling to each other and staying together. So that's my first part. I've observed that, and in the back of my head, I've kind of been thinking that. Now, I want to add another preface. For years, until the tree fell down, in Cedar Fort, Utah, there was a pair of bald eagles. They did not live in Utah, but they would migrate and winter in Utah. They're from somewhere else way far up north, Idaho or further, who knows. But this pair, during non-breeding season, winter time, December, January, February, would hang out. And they'd go, they're hunting rabbits. You know, they're bald eagles, but they hunt rabbits uh, here in the winter, roadkill, things like that. And they had a nest that they never used. And I had a biologist one time uh, when I was out watching and filming him and he came out and he was like, oh yeah, and explaining it. He basically considered it a love nest and that it was an act of pair bonding. That it's like, okay, we kind of migrated together and here's an area where we're at. Now, come summer, we're going to be up north with our actual nest and our actual young. But in between when we're not eating, we'll, you know, go ahead, male, bring me sticks and the female, okay, like I'm adding to this nest each year. But again, they never used it for actual nesting, and they always ditched out by March and were nowhere to be seen. And so it 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 would appear to be that kind of idea. And I, you know, I'm not a bald eagle researcher. Maybe that's normal behavior. Maybe it's abnormal behavior. But the the principle was, hey, more than just returning to your breeding range. Also, you could migrate loosely together, and you could even go through courtship-type behavior in anticipation that in a few months, you're going to be doing the same thing up north. So it's a way of showing commitment that transcends language. So with that, those prefaces in mind, I've noticed something very strange. I've been going out helping a lot of people trap their birds this year and uh, going out flying with different people in, in the field all over northern Utah and uh, even... Uh, visited southern Idaho a few times. What I'm seeing is a lot of birds that are not eagles that are paired up in a non-breeding capacity. I am seeing peregrine falcons chilling together, male and female, nowhere near a nest, middle of nowhere. You know, I'm seeing lots and lots and lots of red-tailed hawks, especially uh, lots of kestrels. That and I know my kestrel range is pretty good locally and i'll say and we've had a big influx of kestrels the past three weeks and a lot of them are pairing are sitting paired up and my hypothesis the thing i'm wondering that i'm questioning and i think this is a valid potential even if it's totally wrong is have things been so rough in certain areas that birds have been trying to show hey we're still going to so, show a, a social connection and have courtship behavior by just perching together out of our range. We've migrated from another state. We're here for the winter, just like the bald eagles doing that uh, nest as a social bonding to say, hey, we're a pair. Could that also be the case? I, I have not seen it like this before. You occasionally you'll see a pair of red tails, but uh, where I live, we don't have many red tails. They're all up in our mountains. And so you have mostly Swainson's hawks in the valley, and then come early fall, sh they leave. And then you get red-tailed hawks from our valleys, that, from our mountains that come down to the valleys, and then eventually they leave, and then we have red-tailed hawks from other states sh come here. So by this late in the season, that means I am seeing red-tailed hawks from other states coming here and staying paired up even through the non-breeding season. And again, that's something more I would expect with an eagle, not with a hawk, not, not with a red-tailed hawk, not with a peregrine falcon outside of their breeding range. It seems strange to me. So my two questions are, first of all, I'm in Utah. I'm wondering, anybody else who watches this channel, have you seen similar behavior, particularly in, uh, I guess I would say, Western Canada and the Western and Central United States? Have you seen a similar behavior uh, like I have? And if you haven't, I encourage you to watch for that. And if you notice it, maybe come back to this video and, you know, type a comment of what you've seen. And second of all, what do you think is a hypothesis? Could it be that if birds are even more strained of multiple years of droughts, and maybe they've had a couple years where a pair has chosen not chosen, I, you know, I use that term loosely, has not uh, fully 
committed to producing offspring but have defended their breeding territory could it be that they have migrated more closely together as a way to say hey look we're still in us still committed to you kind of like those bald eagles uh let me know what you think let me know what you've seen and even if you're in another part of the world what have you seen do the raptors in your area normally pair off year round even when they're far out of their breeding range love to know your thoughts and your observations. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, happy hawking.